Hello, and welcome back to another Economic Development Week tribute with the Maryland Economic Development Association. Uh, as you know, we have extended our tribute to economic development uh, to 10 weeks and are taking a look at industry sectors and other important issues uh, in economic development across Maryland uh, during these videos. So this morning, we are uh, focusing on cybersecurity, and I am pleased to be joined by Ben Wu with Montgomery County Economic Development Corporation and Sarah Horta with uh, Anne Arundel Economic Development Corporation. Good morning to both of you. Morning. Good morning. How are you? Good morning. So I have a few questions for you. You both obviously have a lot of experience and very strong uh, cyber sectors in your communities. So with so many of us working from home these days, how has cybersecurity been impacted during COVID? Tell us a little bit about what you're seeing as it relates to the cyber industry here in Maryland. Ben, do you want to? No, Sarah, please go ahead. <laughs> sure. So I think the industry as a whole did a really good job of adapting when everything first shut down in March. Um, when ADC, you know, activated our first CARES grant for companies looking to utilize that money um, to work in the new, you know, teleworking environment, we saw small businesses purchase plexiglass walls to install between workstations for when they had to go in the office, um, as well as software that allowed employees to safely access their network while working from home. And then when you look at the DOD, which includes those important agencies on Fort Meade, um, I think in March, the Pentagon established a new tool to accommodate teleworking across DOD. And I think by July, um, they had a million active duty users using that environment. So that being said, with all these new users using a new environment or just adapting new practices, we were seeing and still are seeing um, an emphasis on practicing good cyber hygiene and good kind of um, best practices. So you know, this is very cybersecurity 101, um, but you, when you look at some of the attack threat reports that were coming out saying that 8% of the threat landscape was linked to kind of COVID themes, um, it was even more important to look at your security policy, who's on your network, what assets do you have, using a multi-factor authentication, not just using your password as your dog's name. So instead, you know, I kind of, I think the collectively, they came together and said, okay, this is happening. Let's, let's make sure that we protect what we already have before we go out and do anything else. Yeah, sure. Obviously teleworking, we've heard a lot about how that's opened up um, new risk to companies and how they manage that workforce from, from a remote perspective. So Ben, what, do you, what are you seeing? Well, I think the survey data uh, seems to suggest uh, that Sarah's points are exactly uh, valid. Uh, according to results of the CSO, the Chief uh, Security Officers uh, Pandemic Impact Survey, 61% of security and IT leaders responded that they were very concerned about an increase in cyber attacks that targeted their employees who were working from home. And they're right to be concerned because according to the survey, 26% have seen an increase in the volume, severity, and or scope of the cyber attacks since mid-March when the pandemic began. And what we've seen also with the pandemic is that a number of businesses, especially small businesses, uh, that uh, did not have an ability to communicate to with their uh, employees, their customers, their clients, uh, needed to do so uh, once we were essentially put into a, a shelter in place, stay at home order uh, at the very beginning of the pandemic. Uh, and so uh, they needed a lot of hardware, a software. In Montgomery County, we provided uh, a, a couple million dollar fund uh, for telework assistance, uh, but included in the eligible items that could be uh, provided for reimbursement uh, in that fund uh, included cybersecurity. Uh, but oftentimes what we found is that the businesses, uh, when they were looking to develop e-commerce or, or in, uh, engagement uh, through remote working with their employees, you know, they bought, purchased the hardware, they purchased uh, whatever software their needs that they needed to have to stay connected uh, and uh, internet packages. Uh, but oftentimes cybersecurity uh, was a, a luxury that they didn't prioritize as high as perhaps they could have. And it's also very hard because these businesses, especially small businesses, are trying to survive uh, and stay 
uh, open uh, and has some sort of continuity of operations uh, during this pandemic. I, and so uh, it's hard because sometimes these small businesses uh, feel that cybersecurity is a luxury they just can't afford, uh, when in fact, the threat levels, as Sarah indicated, are as significant as they ever have been. Sure, I feel like that is a, a theme that we have heard in this industry, uh, not just during COVID, but you know, uh, for, for many years prior, you don't realize how important it is to invest in cyber until you need it, and then it's too late. Um, and that's kind of the driving force for a lot of companies. So are you seeing any new uh, technologies or new safeguards coming out of the industry um, during this time? So from my perspective, I think that, again, that defense in, in depth um, is, is super important, not only having a, you know, a firewall, but, you know, an IDPS to look at signatures coming through the network um, to look at and tracking the signatures against potential vulnerabilities. Um, so kind of having a cohesive um, way to prevent or the, to prevent an attack or to uh, see if an attack has entered the network qu quicker. Um, and then you can provide those incident response measures in, in a quicker way. So your network isn't off because you know, an, you know, network off means losing time, losing money, um, and potentially fatal for these companies. I mean, we saw the fire eye attack that, that came out on Tuesday it was detrimental for what's happening there. So that just goes to show anyone can get hacked. And I think looking for a more cohesive a, co a more comprehensive cyber platform or ways to kind of check all those boxes. Right. In Maryland, you find that the nation's top security agencies, along with universities dedicated to preparing tomorrow's cybersecurity leaders are here. So we're very fortunate uh, to have that. <laughs> in Montgomery County, we have uh, in Rockville, the uh, NIST a National Cybersecurity Center for Excellence that works very closely with industry to try to stay on top of all of these trends uh, and all of the technical issues uh, that are uh, critical uh, to be, for companies to uh, be assured that they can operate as successfully as possible uh, and to try to address uh, cybersecurity threats uh, as well as to try to uh, work with industry to collectively define standards as well as uh, ways in which uh, industry can be uh, more engaged uh, in the cybersecurity realm. Uh, and uh, what we're trying to, to do working with uh, NIST and the National Cybersecurity Center for Excellence is to uh, help them develop a local economic development uh, component uh, attached to their national mission. Uh, so uh, we're working uh, to try to engage our companies in Montgomery County and in Maryland uh, to be able to work uh, closely uh, with uh, NIST and the National Cybersecurity Center for Excellence. And they're, on, they're very good and they uh, are on the cutting edge of ways in which uh, we can uh, not only uh, protect our uh, cybersecurity assets uh, and uh, guard against threats, uh, but also to be able uh, to commercialize cybersecurity products as well. Yeah. Great. Yeah, that, that's a great asset here. And I know, um, you know, it's a really critical component to get uh, industry engaged in, in those solutions. So, so tell me a little bit about, and maybe Ben, we'll, we'll start with you on this question. What are you seeing or what do you see as the future for, uh, for this industry? Well, for us here in Maryland, I think the future for work for the cybersecurity industry uh, in order to nurture uh, the growth uh, is workforce development and developing that talent pipeline, uh, trying to work with industry to develop the curriculum for certification and degrees with our academic institutions. Uh, you know, here in uh, Maryland, especially uh, in Anne Arundel, where Sarah is, and Montgomery County, where I am, uh, we have a number of uh, institutions that are engaged in advanced degree programs uh, at, over at Montgomery College, uh, Anne Arundel Community College, uh, as well as University of Maryland College Park and uh, UMBC that are real national leaders uh, in uh, their respective uh, areas uh, that are uh, helping to uh, not just create uh, degrees, but also to provide the certification necessary for entry level uh, folks uh, to be able to enter into uh, and get jobs uh, in cybersecurity. Uh, and that's going to be very critical because companies are only going to locate uh, in Maryland, in Montgomery County, in Anne Arundel County, if they have an assurance that uh, there is going to be a talent pipeline that will allow them to continue to grow and prosper. 
Yeah, agreed. Workforce is a critical issue. We see that across our industry sectors, but particularly in cyber, we know there's a, a huge need uh, and a lot of vacant positions and an opportunity for people really to take advantage of that. Sarah, what are you seeing for the future? Yeah, so just to add on to Ben's point, I think we're, you know, and this was even happening, I think, before, before COVID hit. Um, I think a heavier emphasis on biotech and health IT, you know, how can we protect our health information? How can I access securely my health information if I'm not going to the hospital? Um, but I think that we're seeing trades as uh, we'll be making a comeback in a really important way. You know, Anne Arundel is home to BWI Thurgood Marshall Airport, Tipton Airport, that's in close proximity to the fort. Um, and, you know, while these companies aren't really looking for the computer science degrees, they're looking for the civil engineering and mechanical engineering who will, you know, really get to do some pretty cool stuff. I think in January, our community college um, announced the construction of, I think it was like the Center for, uh, for Innovation and Skilled Trades on the Arnold campus. And so they're doing this to address the growing need for skilled trade workers, which um, has been identified as a, or difficult, the, one of the most difficult positions to fill. Um, and you know, as, as we all know that cyber doesn't have a NICS code. Um, I think as an industry, you know, it's, it, it really looks bright and has a lot of potential, but to Ben's point, what that just means we need to collectively come together to fill that workforce pipeline. Yeah. Absolutely. That's very, very important. And it's interesting to see, too, you, there's a lot more conversations to your point about um, life sciences and, and health IT. Uh, we're seeing kind of that intersection across sectors with uh, aerospace and cybersecurity and the importance of securing, you know, unmanned systems or, um, you know, with the, the health IT points, um, agriculture and ag tech and the internet of things. There was just recently a conference hosted between CAMI and, and F3 Tech talking about the importance of cybersecurity and protecting data and critical systems and infrastructure related to agriculture and food production. So you do definitely see that, um, th that cross section of importance when you're talking about this sector. So what do you think economic developers uh, should know about how to best support the cyber security industry? What can we as economic developers do to help that sector grow here in Maryland? Sarah, do you wanna start? Sure. Um, so I think down at the personnel level, we need to continue to be responsive. I think it's inherently important to get back to people, even if the answer isn't ultimately what they want to hear. Um, and that's really just a good rule of thumb that we have here at ADC for any of our sectors. Um, I think we need to be to continue to be active in developing and supporting partnerships that continue to move the industry forward, um, whether that be a startup program that assists entrepreneurs build high growth companies like our founder track program um, in Annapolis, I think um, applications are still being uh, submitted, um, or working with our local workforce office or in our community college to try and find companies that match the skills of those who are coming out of those programs. And finally, I think at the top level, we need to do, and I think we're doing a pretty good job of this already, we need to work together across county borders to promote the region and promote the state as a viable home to companies that are looking to expand or you know, come to Maryland. You know, we do have great assets here, um, cost of living, schools, talent, proximity to parks and beaches, and of course the Ravens, even though I'm a Washington uh, football team fan. <laughs> I won't hold that against you. Thank you. Well, ben, what are your thoughts? I think that's an excellent point, Sarah. I mean, we have 24 jurisdictions here in Maryland, uh, but uh, we have one state. Uh, and within that state, we have so many assets uh, in the cyberspace uh, that uh, everybody can take advantage of. Uh, so uh, we should have all of the 24 economic development the jurisdictions uh, to uh, work with you, uh, Heather, and with at Commerce uh, it, to look at uh, how we can maximize our state assets. Uh, and within each of those jurisdictions, though, uh, they can work with their academic institutions, uh, with industry, uh, and also their workforce development agencies uh, in order uh, to try to develop 
uh, ways in which they can better support the cybersecurity industry, it, it, working with academic institutions on curriculum development, certification programs, working with industry to be able to, as you mentioned, Heather, uh, to be able to meet the needs of the intersection of industry sectors that we're seeing from life sciences, agriculture, defense, uh, and cyber is a component of all of the evolution advancement, all of those industry sectors. Uh, and then working with the workforce development teams within the jurisdictions uh, to be able to uh, make sure that we do have that talent pipeline that will give assurances to companies uh, that they uh, can continue to grow uh, and to develop uh, their workforce because companies will go where the talent resides. Uh, and in Maryland, we're very fortunate because we're home to the best and the brightest. And we also have critical security agencies, including the US Cyber Command, NSA, DSA, and NIST that call Maryland home. And so naturally these institutions attract the nation's best cybersecurity practitioners. Uh, and so we have these assets that uh, continue to elevate Maryland uh, and our jurisdictions uh, in a way that if we work together, we can be even stronger, especially now as we address these issues related to the pandemic. Yeah, great. Thank you both for the, your thoughts. Any closing thoughts on uh, cybersecurity in Maryland for our audience? Not going away. So just we, we need to continue to work together and having you know great partners like down in, um, over in Montgomery County and definitely help those for, you know, for us in Anne Arundel. So we just all need to continue to work collectively together towards um, supporting supporting cyber. Yeah, great. And Heather, we heard this repeatedly back when Mike Gill was uh, secretary. Uh, economic development is a team sport uh, and cybersecurity is a team sport too. Uh, we have all these assets in Maryland. If we collectively work together uh, to be able to uh, leverage those assets, uh, we can all benefit the state and all of our jurisdictions. Yeah, great. Well, thank you both so much for being with me today and, and talking about this important industry here in Maryland. And uh, we are we are really appreciative of, of your time and all that you do to help support the industry uh, to grow here um, in your jurisdictions and, and all across the state. So definitely, definitely appreciate that. And thanks to everyone for tuning in and listening to our conversation. I would encourage you to visit the MEDA website to learn more about economic development in Maryland at MEDAMD.com. And you can also view all of our Economic Development Week tribute videos on the MEDA YouTube page. Take care.